Hi guys, in the second part of the tutorial video on FFT, I'm going to show you how we're going to correctly label the X axis for the frequency domain here. If you can see here, the number represented here is the number of sample. Okay, if you have a look, this signal here, we plot of FFF. If you have a look here, FFF, we have the sample of 4096. Alright, this is the number of sample represented by this axis here now our task is to label correctly this axis into the frequency if you try to zoom here and have a look okay one of the frequency signal here all right we try to zoom and try to choose the peak and see what happened there okay this peak here represented by five sample number 574 this is not the frequency number okay what how are we going to do that? The first thing is we're going to assign the new variable for the frequency axis. X F T equal to F S. Okay, from zero, which represent the DC component of the frequency until N F F T two divided by two. All right, we're going to only take half of it. Okay, divided by the number of total length N F F T two. All right. Okay, let me try to run and see what happened here. This portion only F9. Okay, we have X FFT 4097, the number of sample. This is the X axis. If you have a look at the Y axis here, we have 4096. The number of sample for this both X and Y is not same. Okay, it cannot be. If you want to plot a graph, the number of X axis must be same to the number of Y axis sample. So, how are we going to solve this problem? By minus one sample. We choose this line again. Press F9. There you go. We have 4096 on the X axis. And we have 4096 on the Y axis. Alright. Now, we can plot here. X, F of T. Try to run and see. Okay. Now, we have the x axis here represent the frequency we can zoom and have a look what is the frequency level for this three signal here okay we have 10 30 and 70 all right now let me try to plot okay the time domain signal and also the frequency domain signal okay simultaneously in one figure so how are we going to do that? We're going to use the command sub plot. Okay, we're going to have two different row two, one, one. Okay, for this one it's going to be the time domain signal. DT to Y4, which is our signal. Alright, after that we're going to have another sub plot. Two, one, two. The second row is for the our frequency domain signal. Now we can label all the x axis and y axis. X label. Okay, this one's supposed to be time in second. Alright, then we're going to have y label, which is supposed to be the amplitude. Okay. Alright, then we can give a title to that graph. It's supposed to be time domain signal. Alright. Okay, we can repeat the same thing for the frequency. Okay, X label. Alright, it's supposed to be what? The frequency. In what? In health. Okay, that we're going to have Y label, we're going to be normalized frequency, normalized amplitude. Okay, we're going to have the title supposed to be frequency domain signal all 
right okay that's all put it properly in the capital all right there you go now we let we try to run it and see what happened there okay now we have the time domain signal on the top and also frequency domain signal on the bottom okay the time domain signal that we use in fft here okay give us the accurate the number of frequency that represent in the time domain in frequency axis in this time domain signal we have three different frequency that present okay we know that we create this y4 signal by adding y1 y2 and y3 and we know that the y1 and y2 and y3 have a different frequency for each one of them okay let me all right you see previously here this is our y1 y2 and y3 signal we know the frequency component for each one of them when we add all of them the three of them and become y4 the identity of the frequency does not disappear does not gone is still there so when we try to use this signal the y4 and proceed with the fft phosphor transform we can identify the number of frequency that represent in this signal here okay if you do the fft for this signal you're only going to get one frequency if you do to this one you're going to have another one this is for represent with another frequency but let's say if all this time domain signal combined to become one signal okay it's not easy for you to identify the frequency that present here so we have to do we have to use the function of ft to identify what is the signal of the frequency okay now let me try to plot back all right when press f9 you can see here for this signal we have three different signal here frequency signal here let me try to change the frequency of this signal okay when we change the frequency of this signal in time domain whether it's going to affect the frequency domain let me try to check and see what happened okay instead of having 10 30 and 70 let me have a like a 40 60 and 100 okay, now what are we going to happen try to run and see there you go our time domain signal change okay the different shape and at the same time we have a three different frequency a new frequency appear at 40 60 and 100 okay so from here we can say that whenever the frequency change is going to directly influence the time domain signal okay okay now let me try to plot this frequency this bunch of frequency with the previous frequency on the same graph and have a look what happened there all right let me close this graph first okay let me all right let me have uh we're going to assign a new command it's a hold on okay we don't want the previous figure to disappear hold on okay let's say for this new figure we give a new color there so that we can have a two distinguished color color this is the red color all right assign the same color for the same frequency all right try to write first okay we have the red color signal representing 40 60 and 100 now i'm going to minimize it I'm going to change this to the previous frequency 10, 30, and 70. Now I'm going to change the color. Let me change to green color G. And also this one going to be green color G. And I'm going to run it and open back the figure. There you go. What happened there?
whenever we change the frequency the shape of the final final time domain signal is going to change all right see the red color here represent the 20 okay 20 40 let me 20 60 and 100 let me try to zoom there what is the red color signal represent 40 60 and 100 representing the red color signal while the green side color signal representing 10 30 and 70 all right so whenever we change the fundamental frequency of each one of the time domain signal we're going to have a different shape of the time domain signal okay and at the same time when we use the fft we still can identify what is the frequency for the new time domain signal okay you can see from here this one the red color represent 40 60 and 100 while the green color represent of 10 30 and 70. now let me try to normalize the amplitude here okay try to minimize it okay i'm going to min uh, normalize the amplitude i'm going i can use the same variable f f f equal to f f f divided by maximum of f f f when we divide any value with the maximum value it's going to be only one try to plot again and what happened there all right can uh, i think for this case i have to close this window first and try to run back okay we have the empty one but we lost okay the previous red color signal yeah it is expected but we know that all right whenever we change the frequency the time domain signal going to change okay and also the frequency domain signal going to change okay now let me try to change the amplitude of the signal what going to happen let me try to have a look this is how we're going to learn we're going to play around with the coding we're going to play around with the mathematical okay the parameter and see how it's going to affect the final result okay when we change the amplitude all right we can see here the shape of the signal also change okay let me try to do all right we can see here the shape of the signal change okay let me try to run and minimize it okay initially we have here is 10 and also 10 okay now we change the color into red so that we can plot both of them simultaneously okay plot it okay there you go the frequency does not change as you can see from here okay it's overlap the frequency i didn't change the frequency i just changed the amplitude you can see from here clearly okay whenever they change the amplitude the amplitude of the frequency component also going to be affected but not the frequency itself you can see one appearing at the like a 0 0.4 another one appearing at the, almost like a one okay see what happened here let me try to zoom obviously we can see in time domain signal the green color here which represent the low signal which is just now supposed to be i changed to 10 5 and 1 have a low amplitude thus represented in the frequency domain in the low amplitude while the high amplitude for the amp for the time domain signal represented in the high amplitude in the frequency domain as well okay so the amplitude proportional for time domain and frequency domain you can see here the red color signal have a high amplitude and we try to have a look at the first portion there what happened there okay here what happened since we are normalizing the maximum this is the maximum so both of the signal give a same value because this is going to represent the one okay the red color and also the blue the green color giving the same value because we normalize it to one okay this is what we expected anyway thank you so much to watch my video hope you enjoy it and for the next video i'm going to show you how we're going to apply the low pass filter thank you so much for watching have a nice day bye bye